Hello and welcome to this module on textiles and clothing for grade 7. In this lesson, we'll focus on three parts. Part 1 is on types of sewing machine. Part 2 is on factors to consider when buying a sewing machine. And part 3 is on parts of a sewing machine. You need a notebook and a pen and where possible, a sewing machine for you to practically learn as you follow the lesson. So let's begin. We'll start with how to look for information on types of sewing machines on the internet. The information we are searching for is on types of sewing machine, specifically the hand-driven sewing machine, treadle, and the motor-driven electric machine. All the three machines are for domestic use and suitable for beginners. So when you begin to search for information, have these three machines in mind to save on time. You also need to be familiar with the search engine. And in my case, I am using Google as my search engine. Um, but there are other search engines like Bing, Yahoo, Ask, and so on. So go to the search bar, type in types of sewing machines, click enter or search, and the information that comes up is what we call websites. And when you scroll downwards, you'll see different websites with information on types of sewing machines. All the words that are in blue are active. That means when you click on them, they will lead you to a certain particular website. Kindly peruse through the descriptions for different websites before opening. You can begin by clicking on one of the websites. And in my case, I chose two websites. Let's begin with Wikipedia and click on the sewing machine. This takes you to the Wikipedia website and specifically on the page on the sewing machine. There's lots of information on the sewing machine including its history, the invention, the types of machines, and so on. So that's one website you can use to learn about the sewing machine. If we go back, there's also this other website here called the Online Clothing Study. I want you to click on the 19 types of sewing machines, and it will take you to a page listing the types of machines. Our interest is on the first three which is what is required for you to learn in grade seven. So under domestic sewing machines, you'll find the manual or hand-driven sewing machine as pictured here. Then there is a treadle machine also pictured here. And lastly, we have the mechanical sewing machine, which is also called the electrical motor machine as pictured here. So these are the three machines you should read more about. Otherwise, if you're curious, you can scroll down and learn about the other types of sewing machines. Uh, those are two good websites that can give you some good information about the types of sewing machines. Next, we don't just get information from text. We can also search for images. Click on images and it takes you to so many pictures on different types of sewing machines. You can look at them and if you're interested in any of them, for example, these two, when you click on the picture, you'll see a visit button that takes you to the website and you can explore further if you want to know more about that particular uh, machine. Other than text and images, we can also get information from um, videos. So click on videos and you'll see the different videos you can watch on types of sewing machines. The first video is hosted on console website, while the second is on YouTube. If you have time, click on the videos and watch. You can also get information from other sources such as ebooks. Uh, when you click on books, you'll see the different books that have information on the sewing machine. Unfortunately, most of the books listed here are on sale and only a preview of the book is available. So we've seen you can get text information from websites. You can also get images, videos, and books. In conclusion, when, in, when you're looking for information on the internet, know the type of information you're looking for and be as specific as possible. In our case, we were looking for three types of sewing machines and not just types of machines, right? Otherwise, if you look for machines, you could just bring up any type of machine. Secondly, be familiar with the search engine that you're going to use. And lastly, we don't only get text-based information from websites and books. We can also get images and video-based information. Next, we'll focus on each of the three machines that we've mentioned and learn a bit more about them. 
the hand driven sewing machine is the first one that we are going to look at and it's the easiest to use and the best choice for beginners it's portable and mostly for domestic use one hand controls the movement and speed of the machine by turning the wheel with a handle attached to it the other hand controls and manipulates the movements of the fabric when stitching so a hand driven machine can be converted into a treadle machine by placing it on a treadle table and inserting a belt around the top and bottom wheels it can also be connected to an electric motor so it's possible to turn a hand machine into an electric motor or a treadle machine the next machine is a treadle machine it is powered by pushing a manual treadle or lever back and forth using your feet this movement turns the top and bottom wheels of the machine which in turn interlocks the top and bottom threads for stitching to occur you need to practice how to coordinate the feet when paddling to stitch forwards instead of stitching backwards actually it's something you must practice to be able to do the speed of the machine is regulated by the paddling action and the fabric is manipulated and controlled using both hands a treadle machine is mostly used for domestic purposes though it is faster than a hand machine okay next we are going to look at an electric machine which can either be electrically powered by using a foot pedal or a motor the pressure inserted on the pedal dictates the speed of the machine the pedal is detachable and works when plugged to an electric source you can manipulate and control fabric with both hands when stitching either for the most domestic or industrial purposes let's now look at the second part of our lesson and in this second part we are going to focus on the factors to consider when buying a sewing machine if you're planning to buy or own a sewing machine you need to ask yourself why you need one in the first place without a reason or passion for sewing then you'll end up investing in something that you may never use one thing to note is that clothes are a basic need we all wear clothes and these clothes were stitched by someone using a sewing machine or by hand these clothes also get worn out or they get torn a sewing machine is therefore useful for domestic purposes such as doing simple garment repairs it can also be used for industrial purposes such as stitching large amounts of clothes for sale or stitching curtains and other household furnishings for sale when buying a machine you need to consider the amount of money you're willing to spend and whether the machine will require electricity or manual means to operate it you also need to consider your skill level or how easy it is to use a machine also consider the availability and working or storage space for the machine some machines are large and they require more space you also need to consider the availability of spare parts depending on the manufacturer or the sewing machine brand if the brand of the machine is not a well-known name then when your machine develops a problem it will be difficult to get spare parts to repair it now let's look deeper at some of the reasons why you'd want to buy a sewing machine and we'll start with why would you really want to buy a sewing machine now sewing is a valuable skill to learn and you may want to buy a sewing machine for that reason you may also need a sewing machine if you intend to start a business assuming you get interested in the career of being a fashion designer or a tailor moving forward in the future then a machine becomes an investment for a potential business in the future so if you want to go into business in fashion and textiles a sewing machine is a good investment a sewing machine also stitches faster than sewing by hand and therefore you get to save money that you'd otherwise pay a tailor to repair your torn clothes when you do it yourself using the machine lastly machine stitching is a creative and relaxing exercise so now that you've decided 
to buy a sewing machine sometime in the future probably because it's an area you're interested in will it be for industrial or for manual domestic purpose let's see the difference between domestic and industrial purpose now domestic machines are for simple home uses and can be used to do small projects and stitching hobbies however an industrial machine is used for lengthy professional sewing tasks such as making many clothes for sale and uh, an industrial machine requires expert skill and is often the best choice for fashion designers and garment manufacturers again you need to consider the budget so when it comes to buying a machine what's your budget depending on the amount of money you plan to use there are different types of machines at different prices depending on their functions of course the price is also dependent on the brand or manufacturer's name some brands are superior and more expensive than others here we can see two different types of sewing machines with different prices the top one goes for a 15,000 plus and appears to be a manual treadle or hand machine while the second one goes for 15,000 plus and is a heavy duty industrial singer machine so what kind of brand would you be looking for what you're looking at here are different types of sewing machine manufacturers or brands the most known or well known is singer now singer is named after its inventor his name was isaac merritt singer who invented the world's first machine or the world's first practical sewing machine in 1850 and from then on the singer brand has stood the test of time other famous brands are juki and brother for industrial sewing and then we have gaba technology which is well known for computerized sewing machines next is our third part of the lesson where we are going to look at the different parts of a sewing machine so in this part here we see a machine with different labeled parts it is good to study the image of the sewing machine and memorize the names of each part of the machine that is labeled however i want us to look up close at each of these parts of the machine and know, and know how each of the parts functions we are going to begin with these two parts the first one is a slide plate as pictured here this is a metallic cover under which you find the underneath sections of the sewing machine uh, where things like bobbin and bobbin case are inserted the next picture has an interesting name it is called the feed dog now because of its toothiness or serrated roughness of this machine part that's what gives it the name of feed dog because it resembles the teeth of a dog interesting <laughs> these teeth help to hold and pull the fabric when stitching so you find um, when you lower the presser foot against the feed dog the feed dog help to hold the fabric and pull it away from you when you're stitching then we have the tension disc now the tension disc which is which according to its name is a part that controls the upper thread tension when stitching now tension is how tight or how loose the thread is when the thread is too loose it forms loops when stitching but if the thread is too tight it either breaks when stitching or causes the fabric to pucker to pucker is p-u-c-k-e-r now puckering is gathering up of the fabric when stitching then we have the presser foot which looks like a foot and it is split right in the middle it holds the fabric in place when stitching and the section where it's split that is where the needle goes through during stitching next we have the presser foot lifter which is a metallic part with a flat section resembling the part we hold on a spoon okay it is used to lift and lower the presser foot when you lower it the fabric is pressed in place by the presser foot before stitching and when it is lifted the presser foot releases the fabric which can then be removed 
or moved around the middle area. Then the spool pin is a metallic rod that holds a thread reel or spool as shown on the two pictures. So in one picture, there is a spool pin without a thread. And in the second picture, there is the spool pin with a thread inserted in it. Then we have the balance wheel. This is a wheel that controls operation of the machine by starting and stopping its movement. For the treadle machine, the balance wheel helps to propel the forward movement before the feet pick up the motion and paddle correctly. As a matter of fact, this is harder to explain than to do. So you'd require to practice how to paddle or to treadle on a treadle machine. But to do that, you require the balance wheel to initiate the motion. The stop motion screw, on the other hand, is on the side of the balance wheel and it helps to stop the needle when loosened. So the needle can be stopped when either you're winding a bobbin, when you're not sewing, or when you want to repair the machine. Why would you want to stop the needle? Because it may break if not stopped when not stitching. For example, if you're winding a bobbin and you don't stop the needle, the likelihood of breaking the needle is higher. So you use the stop motion screw to stop the motion of the needle. Let's look at the thread guides. Now there are several thread guides in a sewing machine and where they are located depends on the type of machine. However, for our case, we'll look at two guides that are found on a hand machine, although there are more. One is as pictured here, that is near the tension disc, where the finger is pointing. And the other is above the presser foot lifter, just where the finger is showing. So the thread guides are used to direct the threading of the upper thread from the spool to the needle. So there's a way you thread the machine following all the thread guides as required. We'll learn this in the next video. The thread take up lever. This is a lever that moves up and down when the machine is in operation. The upper thread is what goes through its eyelet. And this is what is pulled by the thread take up lever. So the thread take up lever pulls the top thread from the spool pin to feed the machine. It also lifts back the thread out of the fabric after a stitch is made. And we have the needle clamp, which is a removable clamp that holds the needle in place when stitching. You can actually loosen it by unscrewing it, and then you can be able to insert the needle when you're uh, putting the needle in the machine. So to insert or to remove the needle, you loosen the clamp first. Next, we'll look at the needles. The machine needles come in two types. That is, there is the all-rounded needle and another one that is rounded on one side and flat on the other. The type of machine dictates the type of needle that is to be used. So some machines use a round needle, needles, others use the flat-sided needles. So sewing machines needles have numbers that indicate their sizes. For example, a, uh, the bigger the size number, like 90 stroke 14, the bigger the needle, and big needles are suitable for heavier fabrics. Whereas the smaller the size, the number of the needle, like 60 stroke 8, the smaller the needle, which is suitable for finer or light fabrics. Sewing machines, uh, sewing machine needles also have different tips depending on their purpose. So some are sharp pointed and others are blunt tips. The next machine part is a stitch regulator. It's used to adjust the length of stitches. The old machines have stitch regulators with numbers indicated from six to 30 or so. What these numbers mean is the number of stitches per inch when you're stitching. For example, the bigger the number, the more the stitches in an inch. And the smaller the number, the fewer the stitches in an inch. So when you move the regulator to numbers 8 and 12, the stitches will not be too small or too large. 
these stitches or these stitch sizes are therefore preferred for most stitching purposes larger stitches are preferred for creating gathers on fabric the bobbin winder is an expert and it is labeled as number one and it holds the bobbin in place while it also rotates when winding thread around it the bobbin winder tension bracket which is labeled number two provides tension to the thread when winding it onto the bobbin okay then we look at the bobbin and the bobbin case now these two are remo removable parts of the sewing machine the bobbin holds the lower thread that interlocks with the upper thread when stitching while the bobbin case holds the bobbin in place inside the shuttle of the sewing machine so we've mentioned the shuttle what is it the bobbin and the bobbin case are removable parts that are put in a shuttle okay now the shuttle has a hook that helps to interlock the lower thread with the upper thread as you can see happening here so the hook pulls the upper thread forms a loop which in turn interlocks with the lower thread as we wind up find a sewing machine and identify all the parts that we have covered in this lesson you could ask your parents guardians or teachers to organize a trip to a local tailor or fashion designer shop where you'll be shown different types of sewing machines, their parts, and how they function. And on that note, we have come to the end of this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll look at how to prepare a sewing machine for stitching, and then we'll practice how to do straight stitching. See you in the next video.